Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to be doing something very interesting. We're going to be creating animations in a default Java Swing application. Now a Java Swing application is basically the normal application that we've been creating since uh, last year sometime. And uh, this is a project that I've been working on called RoboDash. It used to control a robot and uh, it's currently being developed by myself obviously. So I've created a basic animation in here and what I've done is I've created my own library because I found that I actually use this animation quite a lot and I don't feel like retyping the code because sometimes the logic can be a bit overwhelming for this and uh, it even confuses me sometimes. So if you look at this task deadlines button, as soon as I click it, you guys can see a nice smooth animation where it moves up, then these uh, text fields move up, all of basically everything moves up. And when you click on it again, you can see it has this nice animation of where it goes down again. So you guys can use this to create uh, you know, some basic, uh, basic movement on your GUI using my library and uh, you know it, it, you can use it for things like this you can use it for the about page you can create you know like a nice scrolling thing um, I obviously just made mine appear and disappear but uh, yeah okay so that's it for that one now I've already created a project right here I've created a project called animation example app package is the package name and start GUI is our uh, JFrame form so I've also added in a label, right? A label is called animation label. Just right click on it, change the variable name. So I did this just to save time because I recorded this video already and it was just way too long. So now that we have this, we need to do a few things. We need to download a few files. Now to download these files, open up your browser, go to my website, techniqueindustries.com. So I mean, it already appears in Google. If you just type in technique industries right there, I'll put the link in the description. First link on the, uh, on the website on Google. This is my website, you guys can find out stuff about my projects, uh, Project Jarvis and see some screenshots and stuff when the images actually load. Um, you can contact me on here as well. Just go to the contact us page, send me an email if you guys need help with something. Now if this download doesn't work or if the button's broken or something doesn't work, just go to the contact us page, send me an email, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll reply to it as soon as possible and I'll fix um, any broken links or anything like that so it just got a little bit of information it says uh, basic animation and swing application version 1.0 supports j text field and j labels only um, it does not support j combo boxes or anything of that just yet version 2.0 will support everything uh, download comes with java doc index html file api reference download below so just click on the download button it takes you to hightail.com and uh, it's a really nice site actually you can host your your files and stuff it's basically dropbox and uh, no no adverts or anything so you just want to click on the download button here it's a really small file 43.4 kilobytes it'll take no time at all and uh, here you guys go you can see once you have it downloaded that's all you need extract it all to your desktop or somewhere safe extract it somewhere where you're not going to lose it maybe create a folder um, on your hard drive somewhere just for for libraries and stuff so here's the java doc file I was talking about if you just double click and open it you guys can view the index.html file click on animation class and you guys can see the information on the API so I know this looks a bit overwhelming right now but it's actually really simple to use you guys can see all the methods that I have in the animation class class and we got j label x left and if you read the description this method moves a j label in a left direction only and it's really simple to understand if you can understand one you can understand all so we can move the j label up down left right and the j text field up down left right and obviously you can uh, you, know, you can make them work at the same time to make it move in diagonal fashions and uh, if you click on j label x left it takes you down to a more detailed description of what uh, each parameter uses and how to actually use it so public void j label that's what the method is and here's what the parameters mean so the start in start the x location of your label at the starting point before the animation occurs stop x location of your label at the finish point where the animation has been completed so i'll explain this more in detail a bit later on and you guys can use this as a reference just in case you forget in the future so save that somewhere that's really important to keep um, you guys can import it into your into your file but for me it's not really working so I'm not going to go over that I'm just going to put that there and we have two other files we have a readme file which no one ever reads but I included it here anyways because it does have important information so if you guys don't want to rewatch the video all over again all the information I'm saying right now is available in the short text file and uh, yeah, this video is just for reference and uh, it's my tutorial basically for on how to use this animation library class. So, yeah, move our readme up there. And now we're left with our jar file. Now this jar file is basically a Java runnable. That's what it stands for, J-A-R. 
and uh, if you guys play Minecraft you know exactly what a GR file is and basically you should have the JRE installed you should have at least uh, JRE 7 update 51 because that's what's out right now uh, you don't want to take a risk with Java because it has been ex uh, experiencing security flaws and stuff like that recently so what I suggest doing is updating everything this animation library will work from JDK uh, 1.2 or something crazy like that it'll work right at the beginning um, as long as it has basic methods but obviously don't use JDK 1.2 or 1.3 or 1.4 you want to use JDK 7 because that's the most recent one and uh, it's just the most logical thing to do. So make sure you have JDK 5, 6, or 7. Those are safe. Uh, Choose this library. So this library contains a class that I wrote. Now, if you guys open up any one of your NetBeans projects, I'm going to open up Project Jarvis, right? Project Jarvis Mini. If I go into the distribution file, you can see I have a GR file. And if I double click the GR file, it'll run my program. And uh, you guys can see the thing is starting up. Sometimes it won't run depending on uh, what your what your program actually depends on so right now mine is depending on some stuff that isn't contained in the GR so it's not gonna run but um, 9 times out of 10 it will run so this animation library doesn't have any main class all it has is methods and uh, classes and stuff like that it has one class and I think eight methods to control a J label and a J text field in all four directions X Y and uh, yeah X and X and Y that's what it is so that's what the animation library is. Now, in order to actually make use of this library in your project, you have to import it into your project first. So the way to do this is, you right click on your project name, which in my case is called animation example, go down to properties, select the libraries from the categories, and then on the right hand side, you can see we have three buttons. You want to add a jar slash folder, and then locate your jar file. Now keep in mind, once you, uh, once you set this jar file, you guys can see where it's looking for the jar file. See uses my your desktop animation library jar. So it's on my desktop and it's called animation library jar. So if I move this jar file somewhere else, I'll have to also remove it. Uh, that doesn't make sense. I'll have to move, uh, you know, I have to set the new location of where I moved the animation library class. So create a folder on your documents, you know, somewhere in here named uh, libraries or stuff like that because in future you will be using libraries a lot. So once you have that imported, you're just going to click on OK just build your project and then you're good to go so what we're gonna do is as soon as we click this J label and this is just a basic bare bones J label with the background and if you guys are wondering uh, color is 186233 and you have to select the opaque option so if you don't select opaque it will just be transparent so you want to select it to be true and that's how you make that J label so when you click on this J label we want it to move to the right hand side now if you guys read the readme file you can see it says make sure to use null layout for your project's GUI so this is a GUI right here so we need to change our layout to a null layout okay so to set to a null layout all you did is select your JFrame right click on it go down to set layout and then change the layout from absolute layout to null layout there we go you guys can try it out with absolute layout I found it didn't work for me so that's why I'm using this uh, null layout so now we're gonna right click on our J label so when we click on our J label it's gonna move it to the right when we click on it again it's gonna move it down to the left so we're gonna go down to events mouse mouse released uh, tab space oops 20 tabs just one tab space oh and we have to add our import so the import is really simple it's called import app package dot oops app package dot animation class dot star semicolon so what this is doing is it's basically importing our animation class jar or this animation library and uh, the location for the animation class is found in app package dot animation class so really simple to use really easy to remember that if you guys cannot remember that just simply type import animation class and it will provide you with the fix so when we go into animation label mouse release event what we're going to do is we're going to create an object of the animation class so we're going to type in animation class and then just give it a random name. So I'm going to name it AC equals new animation class. Okay. That's how you create an object in Java. Hopefully you guys should know that by now. And uh, obviously AC is just a random variable name I gave. You can name it that if you felt like. But I don't feel like naming it that. So once you have that done, right, you need to access whatever is in, uh, in this animation class. So we're going to type in AC dot and we want to move the label to the right hand side right so we're going to look for j label x right so x axis is basically horizontal so it'll only move in the left or right direction and obviously if you want to move to the left you'll choose j label x left we want to move it to the right so we're going to choose j label x right now this is fairly simple to to memorize 
The first one is start, second one is stop, third one is delay, fourth one is increment, and then the last one is whatever label variable name you want to you want to move. So let's go over this. So at the beginning, where do we want to start? We want to start at some coordinate, which is currently where it is right now. So we're going to go right click properties and uh, we need to find the X coordinate that our J label is currently at. So currently it's at 40. I'm just going to copy this. Okay, so it's going to start at 40. And now where do we want it to end? So what you guys can do is you can move it. Let's move it all the way down to the end of the screen, right? And then find the X coordinate again, which is 340. And just press control to, to move it back to the default position. So it's going to start at coordinate 40 for the X axis. And it's going to move to coordinate 340 on the X axis. Um, once the animation is complete, so it's going to move like this. And it's going to stop like there somewhere. That's how it's going to look. But a little bit more smooth and better than that. So the third one is the delay, right? Now the delay is um, between each movement. How, uh, you know, maybe to explain this, we'll have to explain the movement first. So we can select the movement in pixels. If you want to move it one pixel at a time, you can. If you want to move it two or three pixels at a time, you can also. Remember, if you move it one pixel at a time, it'll be extremely smooth. If you move it at 10 pixels at a time, it'll look like it's jumping, like it'll look like this, like it's jumping. So you guys can select whatever suits your needs. Uh, remember, you don't want to move it by one increment every single time if your computer is really slow. So what we're going to go for is we're going to go for, let's say, two, uh, two pixels at a time, right? And then the next one is the delay. So once it moves, so once it starts, right, it starts right here. And then we want to move two pixels over. But what time do we want to specify that moves the two pixels over in? So we can select one second. So in one second, it'll move two pixels. Then in, in two seconds, it'll move four pixels. And it's going to move... Uh, one second every for every two pixels so obviously that's uh, you know that's that's insane you want to select something really quick and the thing is with this one it's set uh, it's set in milliseconds so um, you can go for something like let's go for 10 milliseconds okay so you guys can see how fast this will go obviously you guys can calculate how fast it's going to take how long it will take and then you guys can calculate it's really simple so guess what that's it that's all you need so when we run our program it's going to open up in its own sweet time. I really need to put in my SSD. Where is it? There we go. Oh, okay. And uh, the problem with this is that sometimes the Snell layout screws up everything. So what you want to go, what you want to do is you want to get your coordinates, right? So the coordinates are 500 by 300. That's the width by height. You want to right click on your JFrame form, which, you know, go down to properties. That's pretty basic. And then you want to look for all these random numbers. Look at this. The maximum size is all messed up. So you want to select that to your GUI size, which is 500 by 300. Minimum size. This is why it started off completely invisible because it started off at 0, 0. You want to select it to be 500, 330. Preferred size as well, 500, 330. That one's fine. And then you want to click on close. And then just uh, fix up whatever you moved. There we go. Build and then run and this should open. There we go. So now when we click on our label, you can see it has this awesome animation where it moves. So now let's experiment with um, a few of the parameters, right? So if you select, uh, let's go with let's go with mm, 20 pixels so that you guys can see how this looks like. And let's select the delay to be a bit slow at one second. Uh, that's not one second, that's one second. So now you guys can see uh, what's going to happen. So when we click on this, it's going to take one second to move. There we go. You guys can see it takes one second per movement and it's moving 10 pixels or 20 pixels or however much we set. And it's going to keep moving until it reaches the end. There we go. Now if you find that for some reason it's not ending where it should end, it's because your start and stop is not in, uh, in a, a good value. Basically, you can see 40 and 340, right? So we go to our calculator and say calc. And if we say 340 divided by, whoops, this one divided by, 340 divided by 20, you can see it's perfectly divisible, right? So it has to be perfectly divisible, otherwise it won't stop where it needs to stop. So you want to select something that goes, uh, you know, with increments of one. In uh, you know, one works perfectly. But obviously, if you go with something like, let's say 21, right? This is not a perfect value. So what's going to happen is, you guys will see now. Actually, let's, let's change the speed to about 200 milliseconds, okay? I 
Oh. Okay. Okay, so it works anyways. But in case it doesn't work, you just want to make sure you have a perfectly divisible number. Unless that is... That can't be perfectly divisible. But uh, yeah, that's basically... Basically what it is. So if you do get some sort of weird stuff happening, just remember to make sure it's perfectly divisible. And... Uh, went over 2 and... I think 20 is good. Okay. So that's great, right? Now remember, this thing will only activate once it detects that the J label is at the starting point. So if we want to move this to the, to the right hand side, we can. I mean the left hand side. So if we say AC dot JX left, and then we're going to set the starting position to be 340 because that's where we want to start, and we want to end it at 40. So we're going to move it back, and we can select the same time, we can select a different time, whatever you want. That's it. This is how easy it is to use my Java library. So when you click on it, you can see it looks really smooth. Hopefully on the video it looks smooth. And then when we click on it again, it detects that it's at the finish point and it'll move it back to the left. And I mean, you can do this all day if you feel like. I think I'll do that, so. Uh, this is going to be a long video. Okay. Okay, so that's great. Now we can also make this thing move up and down. So I'm going to re reposition this to somewhere here. And it's basically the same thing, except instead of getting the Y coordinate, I mean the X coordinate, we're going to get the Y coordinate. So 220. And let's go for AC dot move it Y up, okay? And then the starting point is going to be at our current Y value, which is 220. And we're just going to move it to something like, uh, let's say 0, 20, let's say 20. No, let's say 40. So. 40, and then you have your delay, so 20 millisecond delay, and then you have your increments. So I'm going to go up by increments of 2, just because I find that a good value. I find 2 is a good value, 2 or 3. Okay, so now when you click on it, you can see it moves up really nicely. And then when you click on it, it doesn't do anything now, but you simply have to reverse this. So copy this, paste it, and then change Y up to Y down. And then you want to reverse these values. So instead of using 220 as a starting value, you're going to use 40. And then uh, that's it. So what happens is it's going to move up to, it's going to move up from 220. It's going to stop at pixel number 40. And then when you click on it again, it's going to determine that hey, it's already at pixel 40. So I'm going to run this method here, J label Y down, and it's going to move down from pixel 40 to pixel 220. So it's going to move back to its original position. And you guys will see it happening here. So you click it, moves up click it and moves back down. Now you guys can use this however you like. I mean if you want to change the down movement to be smoother and then maybe a little bit faster, so 10 milliseconds, actually that'll be the same. It'll take the same amount of time. You guys see take the same amount of time because I half the values exactly. So I mean let's change this to five. That was stupid of me to do. So let's try this again. So it moves slowly up and then speeds back down. So I mean you guys can do so many cool things with this. You guys can activate other stuff. Now keep in mind you can do the exact same thing with uh, a text field. So you can go with AC dot instead of J label X left, you look for J text field X left. And it's got the exact same parameters, except that on the right hand side, the final one is where you declare the label or the text field that you want to move. So if you want to move your animation label, um, if you want to move this label, this blue label, you find out the variable name, change variable name. You can see it's called animation label. So if you just add in a, uh, what are we adding in again? A text field. You can see it's called J text field one. So if we change the variable name, just copy it. And then we can paste it in here. And then obviously we can just set our values and stuff again. So that's just a really cool way of um, how you do this. This will probably give me an error when I write it. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed animation. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, if you did, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you guys can obviously use this for whatever project you want. It's free to use. You guys can commercially use it. You can credit me if you like. Don't credit me. Whatever. You can reverse engineer that. It's perfectly fine with me. And uh, yeah, if you did like the tutorial, please don't forget to leave us a comment, like, subscribe. If you have problems with any of the download links or if this Java files aren't working for you or whatever reason, um, please do let me know so that I can help you guys out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys.